You might think your birthday has little to do with your development, but you'd be dead wrong. A disproportionate number of major criminals, such as Ted Bundy and Lee Harvey Oswald, were born in the month of November or close to it. That may seem like pseudoscience at first, but in reality many diseases like multiple sclerosis are much more common in people born in these months for a very simple reason, vitamin D deficiency. I have not mentioned vitamin D on the channel much because I tend to concentrate on less known issues, but most people have no idea what a profound effect vitamin D has on early brain development. Vitamin D deficiency in these formative months can have devastating effects on a child's future. Parking in this slot here. For the handicapped. I am handicapped. I'm psychotic. Seattle is one of the most overcast and rainy places on Earth and has seen a wildly disproportionate number of the most violent sorts of criminals, such as Gary Ridgway. Vitamin D deficiency is only increasing over time because people are using more sunscreen and they're going outdoors less and less often. While sunscreen can prevent burning, which can lead to skin cancer, Vitamin D itself has a much greater effect on cancer than sunscreen ever could. This applies not just to skin cancer, but a vast array of cancers. In fact, since vitamin D is required for good metabolic health, deficiency is most likely going to drive up all forms of cancer. The metabolic theory of cancer is promoted by Professor Thomas Seyfried and gives very strong evidence that mitochondrial malfunction and insulin resistance are the root causes of cancer and vitamin D will help you combat these issues. Since vitamin D is required for proper oxidative phosphorylation in the body, without it insulin resistance and obesity are essentially a given. This will have a profound effect in the development of cancer and essentially all chronic disease and obesity as well. This idea is borne out by vitamin D research which shows vitamin D deficiency greatly contributes to just about every disease imaginable from depression to gout. Yes, surprisingly, vitamin D supplementation even lowers uric acid and helps relieve gout. This was a very surprising find for me, and the more I dig, the more I see vitamin D plays a part of almost every health issue imaginable. Whatever your health issues may be, vitamin D is sure to land on your bingo card somewhere, and probably in more than one place. 62 avian flu, number 62. In animal studies, female rodents with vitamin D deficiency give birth to rodents with behavior issues, inability to socialize properly, and hypoxic brain damage. Hypoxia, or lack of oxygen, is experienced to some degree in all births, but in difficult births, the exposure is much longer, and the damage can be severe. Vitamin D helps protect the unborn child from hypoxia, and the human mothers who bear children with serious hypoxic shock all have vitamin D deficiency in common. Vitamin D also has a big effect on muscle strength and fatigue. Deficient people typically feel exhausted all the time, and in experiments, vitamin D increases the amount of oxygen muscles are able to use to create ATP and the total amount of ATP that they can create. Deficiency can cause improper physical development, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, undeveloped sexual characteristics like wide shoulders for men and narrow waist for women, and vitamin D is also required to create both testosterone and estrogen, and supplementing it has been shown in men to increase testosterone levels by over 20%. And this includes the all-important free testosterone, which is needed for muscle growth. When insulin is high in the body, vitamin D is both consumed more quickly and locked up in the fat cells where it cannot come out easily. This leads to greater vitamin D deficiency in most obese people, 
And this will also affect many people who are not obese if they eat a diet that's rich in carbs, especially processed carbs like bread, sugar, and so on. Fasting dramatically decreases insulin levels in a short time, and it helps resolve this problem in the long term, but in the short term, it lowers vitamin D by using it up during the fast because the immune system needs this to heal the body. But ultimately, this will help you keep your insulin levels down, and this will keep your vitamin D levels up over time, especially if you're doing it regularly. Vitamin D helps reduce neuroinflammation, aggression, depression, and anxiety, and even helps prevent the development of psychosis and schizophrenia. So it is especially important to ensure children and young adults don't wind up in a bad situation. Okay, sir, this is to figure out what your aptitude's good at and get you a jail job while you're being a particular individual in jail. Vitamin D is also very important for pain tolerance and also for resisting tolerance to pain medication. This only works when your levels are high before the pain issue occurs, but should also work over time for long-term pain issues. This could also be helpful for avoiding addiction after a surgery or for addiction recovery if you've already become addicted somehow. Without vitamin D, your mitochondria have great difficulty burning fat. Vitamin D will increase energy production in cells and increase fat burning. This should help with both fatigue and exercise performance. And in spite of what many will tell you, this is the determining factor of how you're going to perform in a race. It's the total amount of oxygen your body is able to utilize that determines how you're going to perform. And that's all there is to it. I've mentioned ceruloplasmin a few times in the past, and it's one of the most important molecules in the body, and arguably the most important one. Ceruloplasmin is required for all antioxidant activity in the body to work properly, and it was found experimentally that injecting ceruloplasmin had dramatic effects in many diseases, including schizophrenia, where 26 out of 30 Recipients had remission of symptoms after the injection. Ceruloplasmin is one of the reasons that glycine is an important supplement to take because otherwise your body may accidentally substitute glyphosate for glycine and create a form that simply doesn't work in the body properly. Since ceruloplasmin is a copper-based molecule, then you'd probably think that supplementing copper would be a way to increase it but that's actually not what occurs because your absorption is then downregulated. Amazingly though, vitamin D has a strong effect on ceruloplasmin levels, and high vitamin D levels can give you up to 10 times the amount considered normal, which is a very good thing since this will greatly reduce oxidative stress in the body. This is what makes vitamin D a longevity supplement as well. Nematodes given vitamin D supplements are shown to live 33% longer. It does this by regulating calcium channels and elevating clotho and NRF2, which are known longevity pathways. The same mechanisms exist in humans, but the difference would be much less dramatic, but it's still likely a good solid 1%. But that's around one extra year, so that's really not bad at all. Vitamin D receptor count is also inversely correlated with heart disease. Vitamin D helps control blood pressure and also helps remove plaque from areas it is not supposed to be in. It even stimulates phagocytosis, which is a process by which macrophages and other phagocytes in the body consume materials like plaques, dead cells, and pathogens. This means that vitamin D can also help clear up the dreaded spike protein that we've heard so much about lately, and this counts whether it's natural or unnatural in origin. That's not all vitamin D does for the immune system though. It also impacts T cells and T reg cells, which are needed to fight cancer and to fight autoimmune disease. The T cells attack the cancer and the T reg cells will keep the rest of the body from attacking vital organs like your thyroid or your gut. MS is much more common in children born in and around November, 
in the northern hemisphere. And supplementing vitamin D helps a great deal with multiple sclerosis due to its effects on the T reg cells, which will help keep your body from attacking your own brain. On top of that, it allows the body to absorb more zinc. And this is very important for the immune system if you want it to function properly. It even stimulates PGE2, which is a prostaglandin that can stimulate hair growth, reduce pain, increase blood flow, reduce clotting, limit inflammation and allergic reactions, and much more. Autism is greatly increased in children with vitamin D deficiency, and symptoms are improved by supplementation. Vitamin D deficiency is also strongly correlated with some forms of psychosis, which are genetic in origin, but can be offset with enough vitamin D supplementation. It seems that virtually all mental illness is more common in vitamin D deficient children, including some of the worst violent crime. It's unlikely vitamin D could rid the world of crime, but perhaps it could at least moderate it. Do you know something, Johnny? You don't care about crime. That's yeah. right, Johnny. Yeah. I've devoted my entire life to crime since I was 12 years old. Yeah. It's just that I think we ought to relax us all and enjoy what we got. If that weren't enough, vitamin D also protects the stem cell pools and simultaneously prevents the spread of cancer. In those with vitamin D deficiency, Cancer rates are dramatically higher. Vitamin D even releases BDNF and NGF, which are growth factors that cause the growth of new nerves and new neurons. This means that it is important not just for the developing years, but also for adults to be able to repair the damage of aging as time goes by. Indeed, it is shown to be very helpful in Alzheimer's to supplement vitamin D. Those in the highest quartile of vitamin D levels have been shown to have about 30% less dementia at the time of their death. It's important to note that the elderly create about 70% less vitamin D as they age from the sun, so supplementation may be required. If you have naturally dark skin, you may need much more sun exposure to get proper vitamin D levels if you live in northern latitudes, especially if you're also elderly, because 70% of that will also be reduced. A good level to shoot for is about 50, which may be difficult to achieve. While you might think you get enough from tanning beds, most of them have mainly UVA rays, which do tan the skin, but do more damage to the skin due to penetrating more deeply due to their lower frequency. They also don't stimulate much vitamin D production either, so don't expect to get much from that. UVC stimulates a great deal of vitamin D and does not damage the skin much, but it's also more ionizing and could have a more serious risk of cancer if you have large exposures of UVC. Tanning devices that produce UVB are a good balance between these two extremes, and that's probably what your safest bet is. When trying to get vitamin D from the sun, you'll get much better results between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The rest of the time, the angle forces the rays through a greater distance, and this expends the energy before it reaches you. This is also why you can't get vitamin D through a window. You have to have your skin fully exposed, and you have to be out of doors. You can get vitamin D from wild-caught fatty fish like sardines and herring, but farmed fish has very little vitamin D. Eggs from hens that spend a lot of time outdoors have a great deal of vitamin D as well, but chickens raised in confinement probably have very little. They're gonna have about one quarter as much. Supplementing is probably the easiest way to get optimal vitamin D levels, but unfortunately most vitamin D comes from irradiated mushrooms, which are grown in Chinese labs. Since fungi don't really filter out soil contaminants, and since they're basically everywhere on the planet, this is a very worrying source. I don't take vitamin D supplements currently, so I have not looked into brands in a long time, and I don't have recommendations to make. But if you do take a supplement, it's probably a good idea to research into it carefully, 
and then make sure that you make a good choice. He chose poorly. In short, vitamin D will help almost every process in the body run more smoothly. It plays a major part in ensuring that reactive oxygen species are neutralized properly due to increasing ceruloplasmin in the blood and increasing fat burning ability and reducing insulin resistance. And this makes it an anti-aging compound too. It's also important in the elderly for bone health and avoiding dementia. In infancy, it's critical for brain development, and there is a very disturbing link between vitamin D deficiency and the most heinous violent criminals. It also helps with the development of secondary sexual characteristics, such as broad shoulders or a narrow waist for women. It's also required to produce both testosterone and estrogen, and supplementation increases testosterone in men by about 20%. And this includes the all important free testosterone, which is necessary to build muscle. While well, vitamin D is critical at all stages of life, it is best to start early and become who you want to be from the start because it's not so easy to change things later on. What kind of punch did you make? Uh, lemonade. I made it fresh and everything. How much sugar did you use? Sugar? It's very good. 